Right, so your tank's filled with water. It's up and running, it's up to temperature. Hopefully you've got live rock in there. And the tank is now officially commissioned and going through its cycling process. What do we mean by cycling? I'll try and explain. If you take a clean bucket and fill it with water, any water, whether it be salt water, tap water, reverse osmosis water, and just leave it to stand for a few days organic matter will get into that bucket even if you can't see it and it will start to for want of a better word putrefy or decompose and a byproduct of that decomposition will be ammonia marine fish naturally inhabit water which has a volume of millions of cubic miles of seawater and the ratio of life and decomposition to the ratio of volume of water means that ammonia never really becomes a problem. And there are types of marine life, plants and bacteria, which feed from ammonia. So unlike their freshwater counterparts, marine fish have never built up any form of tolerance to ammonia. And it's extremely toxic to them. Now, eventually, naturally, a biofilm will build up on the interior surfaces of that bucket. Biofilm consisting of various different types of bacteria. And some strains of that bacteria will feed on ammonia. That's their food, their bread and butter, if you like. But a byproduct of this ammonia consumption process creates another chemical nitrate which is just as dangerous to fish life and so another bacteria comes along which consumes nitrate and converts it to a less harmful substance nitrate now in an ideal world eventually during the daylight hours you would see tiny bubbles forming on the inside walls of that bucket it wouldn't actually be very effective on the walls of a bucket, but this would be nitrogen gas, which would eventually rise to the water surface, burst and release that nitrogen gas. And this entire process is what we call the nitrogen cycle. Ammonia turned to nitrate, nitrate turned to nitrate, and nitrate converted into nitrogen gas. In a lot of ways, Obviously, your aquarium is very similar to that bucket of water, but fish themselves create quite large amounts of ammonia just through the normal biological processes of eating and breathing. And without any form of assistance, there wouldn't be enough bacteria on the walls of, say, your aquarium to be able to cope with this. The levels of ammonia would rise, the fish would become ill and distressed and would eventually die. And the more fish that you add to that water, the more bio load is put onto the water. The more ammonia and nitrate that is being produced, the more bacteria is required to process it. So you need a very large surface area to be able to accommodate all that bacteria. Now, this process was discovered by, I think there were two Frenchmen in 1886, so we've known about it for a long, long time. And aquarists have been using this knowledge to keep the water quality at a state that's acceptable for fish for at least 80 years. Now, before the aquarium police start jumping all over me, full denitrification in an aquarium is a very difficult thing to achieve. That final stage of changing nitrate into nitrogen gas isn't really a realistic proposition in the home aquarium. So we keep nitrate levels down by performing weekly water changes. Something that I'll get onto in a later episode. Now, the biggest enemy for any reef keeper is impatience at this stage. 
the filter media that we've placed in our filter will give us more than enough surface area for the required bacteria to colonize but sufficient bacteria will not colonize that filter material overnight it takes time now there are various ways of speeding this up one way if you're not using live rock is to inoculate the system with a live bacterial culture or a dormant bacterial solution which will become live these have been around certainly since the 1970s there's nothing new about them and different brands have different levels of success they also usually come with a pretty hefty price tag and the results i have to say are variable i've tried different types out over the years and they can give you a habitable water quality within anything from three days to a month now if you're using dry rock of any sort putting aside the problem of making that rock suitable for putting in an aquarium environment this is probably the best way to go but for me personally this method is a bit like restoring a thoroughbred race car paying attention to every minute detail lavishing copious amounts of money on it and then fitting a base model suzuki engine it will work but it will be susceptible to crashing and it will also have a shorter lifespan than a well-maintained system using live rock now i'm going to say this cautiously because i don't want to mislead but i've set up live rock systems for public display that quite simply have acted as a mature system from the day they were filled and haven't needed to go through a cycling process and the little three gallon pico tank that you're looking at now is just such a system now if you're a beginner i don't advocate that you attempt doing this because it does require some experience to be able to pull it off now what i would advise either way for the moment don't buy yourself any test kits some test kits are better than others and they also take some experience to be able to interpret them correctly after the first week take a small clean jar fill it with water from your aquarium and take it to your local aquatic center and ask them to test it most aquarium shops will do this for a small fee it's usually only one or two pounds per test and allow them to guide you through the cycling process what you're looking for is initially you will get an ammonia spike then ammonia levels will start to drop and nitrite will start to appear the nitrite level will spike and then it will start to fall off now as ammonia and nitrate return to zero in your test samples a good aquatic shop should then test for nitrate because an accumulating level of nitrate will establish with reasonable certainty that the first two stages of ammonia and nitrate removal have completed now exactly how long this is going to take and how many tests will be required and i'm talking weekly tests is a little bit like asking how long a piece of string is there are so many variables that can affect this establishment process and having tested literally hundreds of clients and customers water samples over the years of the cycle the tanks i can say that generally you'll be looking at a month but in some cases it can take up to 10 weeks a system using quality genuine live rock generally will cycle faster much faster and i think especially for beginners it comes with one or two advantages usually in about the first week sometimes two weeks it depends on the quality of the rock you will start to see signs of life on that rock tiny snails bristle worm minute brittle stars and an assortment of amphipods and copepods this does help to alleviate impatience because these 
creatures in themselves are fascinating to watch and it's all part of reef keeping in fact over the years there are some systems that i've set up that pico tank being one of them where i've resisted putting fish in because you know they're going to predate the life that's initially established itself in the system and i don't want to lose it seriously do not underestimate how fascinating the biodiversity of real live rock can be but there is much more to this life than just being fascinating to watch this life is performing a very important function for a start it's seeding your bacterial filter media allowing it to rapidly build up a useful sized culture Secondly, it's putting a load on your system. These little creatures are producing ammonia and are basically kick-starting a very sustainable natural ecosystem. Now, round about the two-week mark, usually what happens is you will get a population explosion of these creatures. That is the time to go and get your first water test done and ask the shop to test for all three elements, ammonia, nitrate and nitrate. Now very often at this two week stage, the tank will to all intents and purposes have cycled. And this will be shown in the tests by zero ammonia, zero nitrate and a trace of nitrate. But as I've said, this can be variable. It depends on the quality of the live rock and the care with which you've set your aquarium up. But either way, once you're sure this cycling process has completed, it's time to think about adding the first fish, which of course is going to be the subject of next week's video. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support. We are so close to the 1000 subscriber mark now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. If you are a subscriber, be sure to hit the notification button so that you can be informed every time I upload a new video. I will, of course, be back next week. So until then, take care and I'll see you soon.